So welcome to this short tutorial on selecting in Houdini. Of course there is a tutorial on selecting available from SideFX and you can access it in the Start Here section of Help. But we're going to go into a little bit more detail here. I've got a simple scene set up with a grid, a sphere and a box. To make a point about what objects are in Houdini, I'm going to go into the box object and add another primitive, a torus. I'm going to use a transform SOP to move it away from the box and then a merge SOP to combine the two so we can see both at once. Let's go back up to scene level. It may look like we have four objects, a sphere, a torus, a box and a grid, but as far as Houdini is concerned there are just three the box and the torus form a single object. There is no way to select the torus on its own using object selection, though there are ways, uh, as we shall see later, to select, for example, all the faces on the torus. Of course, for selecting objects, you can simply select the nodes in the network view, but we're going to concentrate on interactive selection in the 3D view. Let's start by looking at where the various selection options are. They're all on the toolbar to the left-hand side of the 3D view here. These top buttons determine what you are selecting. There are then two buttons which, when depressed, show you you are in select mode. The one you use to do selections yourself is here, and the shortcut for it is S. The other one here, the show handle button, as it's called, is depressed when you are selecting while using a shelf tool, for example. The buttons which determine what you're selecting are from the top downwards to select objects, to select components of objects, so we mean points, edges, faces and so on. The next button selects particle systems and the final one dynamic objects. We won't be looking at these last two in any more detail. There are a wealth of options to customise exactly how you select. These are accessed by right clicking on the selection buttons. There are also options to change your selection, for example to invert it, select nothing, select everything, and these are available by right-clicking inside the 3D view itself while you're in select mode. The different types of selection tool are available by right-clicking on the selection button itself. We'll look at lasso and brush selection later. The default mechanism is box selection. With box selection you can either select with a single click or by dragging using a rectangular marquee. You can, as you would expect, add to your selection, subtract from it and so on. The default is to replace your selection and each new selection replaces the last. If you want to change the mode for a series of selection operations you can do that by right clicking on the select button here but in general you'll want to use modifier keys to control your selection rather than change the mode permanently. Shift toggle selection. It adds to the existing selection but if I click again on the same object it ceases to be selected. Control removes things from the selection and shift and control held down at the same time always adds to the selection even if the same item is clicked twice. The right-click menu in the viewport gives you options to select everything. The shortcut for this is A. To select nothing, the shortcut for which is N. And to invert your selection. If you have a very complex scene, you might sometimes want to enable what's called pop-up menu selection. This is available in the Preferences dialog under Objects and Geometry. With this enabled, you can click in an area with many objects on top of one another and it will provide you with a quick pop-up to list the objects and allow you to choose which one you want by name. Let's turn this off. One final remark on object selection. What happens if you have an enormously complex scene and when you know the name of the object you want to select. 
this case you can use the tree view and type the name of your object into the filter box. You can then select it by clicking on it. Now let's look at geometry selection, which is what Houdini calls the mode for selecting components. The button for component selection is, as we know, the second one down. If we right click we can see the different types of component that we can select. Points, edges, primitives. Um, in terms of polygons, Houdini calls polygon faces primitives. We're not going to look at vertices, breakpoints or groups. As you can see, there are handy shortcut keys for most of these. Two for points, three for edges, four, pr four for primitives. By the way, the key one brings you up into object selection mode. You can only select components of one object at a time. In general, you select the, select the object at object level and then go down into geometry selection. But as you can see here, we're in geometry selection without having selected an object. So, when we're in this position, the first click selects the object. Notice that when we do that, the network view goes down into the appropriate object, and we're now at the geometry level. It's also selected all the components of the given type in the object. Let's start by selecting edges. So I select the 3 key to move into edge selection, and then N to clear the current selection. If I click on an edge, it becomes selected. Notice this is in the form of an arrow. I can change the direction of the arrow by using Shift and R. If I hit the F key, the next edge in line is selected in the direction of the arrow, and so on. If I hit the L key, a whole loop of edges is selected. This is very useful, but depending on how complex your geometry is, and the angle between one edge and the next doesn't always work. Let's change to selecting points by hitting the 2 key. The first thing to notice is that the selection has been preserved. The points that form part of the edge I'd selected are now themselves selected. So this shows how easy it is to change from one type of component to another while preserving the selection. Let's get rid of that. If I select an individual point, I also get an arrow. And I can also select loops of points, and so on. Note that select can and will select things even if you can't see them on the reverse side of an object. This is particularly true for marquee selection. There is a way around this when selecting faces that's to say primitives, but no easy way around it for points or for edges. So when dealing with points, the tools for expanding and contracting a selection are particularly useful. These are on the right-click menu inside the viewpoint. Let's select the topmost point on the sphere. I can now expand the selection a few times, contract it, invert it, and finally, I can also select the boundary. This selects those points that are not next to other selected points. Let's move on to primitive selection mode. This selects, for polygons, faces. As before, as with points and edges, there's an arrow which you can rotate and which you can use to select loops of polygons. It, be quite, it can be quite hard to select the right face if you have a very complex object. If you turn on primitive normals here in the toolbar on the right hand side of the screen, you can then select a primitive by clicking on the normal rather than the face itself. The fact that primitives have normals defined allows us to use an option which is extremely useful in preventing inappropriate selections. This is Select Front Facing, and it's available by right-clicking on the Geometry Select button. It means that you don't get faces on the backside of an object selected 
even when selecting using click and drag. Let's see it work. One more uh, thing to demonstrate before we uh, move on, which is to look at how you might select all of the points, say, on the torus. Let's go back up to object level and select the torus, and then select a single point. If I then right-click on the Geometry Select button and choose Select Connected, then all of the points on the torus are selected. Finally, let's look briefly at lasso selection mode and brush selection. Lasso selection is just like marquee or box selection, but you can sketch out a more complex marquee shape. Brush selection is most useful for points. Any point the brush passes over will be selected. It can also select edges providing the brush passes over both endpoints of the edge. It's less useful for primitives, since to select a primitive you must pass over one of its points, and this selects all of the primitives that share that point.